Welcome to Lab 1 Part 3 where we will cover SymPy, which is a Python library for symbolic computation where variables are represented as symbols. So before we use SymPy, we must first import the library. Import SymPy as follows, import SymPy as sp. A function which is often called is init printing, which allows us to print equations. In the last video, we covered the print function. When working with SymPy, it is common to use the display function instead. SymPy is a symbolic library, meaning that variables are represented by symbols. Every variable in SymPy must first be declared using the symbols function. So let's declare x, y, alpha, and beta as four variables. We can use the sympy.symbols function, and the input to the function is each of the variables in order separated by a space. Let's go ahead and display it. So display and then the variables. As you can see, these are mathematical symbols. Next, we will display this function in sympy. To do so, we can use the variables we have already declared. Next, we can go ahead and write out the equation using our sympy variables. So here to use the square root function, we must use the sympy square root function. Let's go ahead and display the function y. Now we have the equation in terms of x and y. In order to substitute variables into the equation, we can use the subs function. So let's go ahead and set y equal to y dot subs and then curly brackets followed by the variable we wish to substitute, in this case x, then followed by a colon and the value, let's say 3. Simpy returns the substitution as fraction. In order to get the decimal equivalent, use Simpy's capital N function. To declare a matrix in SymPy, we can use the matrix function. We can declare matrix x equal to SymPy matrix. Inside the matrix function, we can use a list and the values of the matrix. Let's display it. To declare a larger list, we can replace the single list by an outer list, followed by the smaller inner list. Let's declare the first row as 1, 2, 3 the second row 4, 5, 6, and the last row as 7, 8, 9. For the matrix math operations, we'll use the following matrices. Let's start with the dot product. The dot product between x and y can be written as x dot dot y. And go ahead and print this out. The cross product is x dot cross y. To multiply a matrix with a vector, use the asterisk. To multiply two matrices, also use the asterisk. To multiply a matrix by a scalar, first start with the scalar, then followed by asterisk, and then the matrix. You can also do this with vectors. To add two vectors, use the plus sign. Before discussing the determinant, let us first declare a new matrix M equal to 1, 2, 3, and 4. To take the determinant of M, start with M dot DET followed by round brackets. To take the inverse of M, start with M dot INV followed by round brackets. To take the transpose of M, Start with M dot capital T. We will use this matrix as an example on how to access elements in the matrix. To access the first row in the matrix M, start with M dot row and then the row index. In this case, index 0. To get the second row, replace 0 with a 1. We can also do this using M square brackets, the row number, followed by a comma and a colon. Here we are indicating we wish to get row 0, and the colon means all of the elements, in this case all of the elements in row 0. 
To get a column in M, start with m.col followed by round brackets and the column index. Let's say index 0. We can also express this using square brackets. Then the colon comes first, followed by a comma, and then the column index. To get the value at row 0, column 0, use m square bracket 0, comma 0. Next, we will cover how to manipulate matrices. We will use the same matrix M as before. To insert a new row into the matrix M, we must set M equal to M.RowInsert. Then the row to insert into, let's say row 0, comma, then the matrix to insert. Since this is a row, we need two square brackets then the value, let's say 1, 1, 1. Now we can display M. Here you can see the new row 1, 1, 1. To insert the row into another position, we can just replace the 0 with that value, let's say 2. Next, let's reset our matrix. To insert a column into M, set M equal to M.col insert then the column number, let's say 0, followed by a comma, then the matrix. Since this is a column, we only need one square bracket, let's say 0, 0, 0. Here we can see the column 0, 0, 0. Now to delete the newly added column, we can use m.col under dash delete, then the column to delete, in this case column 0. Likewise, to delete the first row, we can use row under dash delete. Next, we will cover some built-in functions. So the first one is pi, which is sympy.pi. Then infinity is sympy.2os. Then for sign, we must first declare a variable. Let's say x equal to sympy.symbols x. Now sign in sympy is just sympy.sign and then x will be the input. The same applies for cosine. And log is just log. And e raised to the power of x is exp where x is the input. The factorial of x is sympy.factorial. And finally, the square root is sqrt. Next, we will cover how to take the derivative in sympy. So we will take the derivative for the equation y equal to x raised to the third power. To take the first derivative in sympy, use sympy.diff followed by the equation which is y, then the x value. To take the second derivative, add another comma, and then 2. To take the third derivative, replace the 2 with a 3, and so on. To find the integral, use sympy.integrate, then the equation, followed by a comma, and then round brackets, then the x variable, followed by the lower bound, let's say 0, then the upper bound. To evaluate the following summation, we must first start by declaring the variable n equal to sympy symbols n, then use the built-in sum function, which is sympy.sum with a capital S, then the equation, in this case 1 divided by 3 raised to the power of n, comma, round brackets, the variable n then the lower bound 1, and the upper bound infinity. Here you can see the summation as a sympy expression. To get the numerical value, use sympy dot capital N. In some cases, it may be necessary to simplify an expression. To do so, we can use the sympy dot simplify function, and then the expression. So let's say our expression is sympy sine of x raised to the power of 2 plus the sympy of cos of x raised to the power of 2. 
Here the equation simplifies down to 1. We can also use the expand function to expand an expression. So let's say x plus 2 times by x minus 9. We can also do the opposite using simpy.factor followed by the expression. So in this case, let's use this expression. So x squared minus 7 times x minus 18. Next, we will cover how to solve equations in SimPy. To solve a system of linear equations, use the linSolve function. So first, we must declare x, y, and z equal to SimPy.Symbols and x, y, and z respectively. Then we will use the SimPy.LinSolve function. And the first input is a list of the equations. So the first equation is x plus y plus z minus 5 equals 0. The second equation is x plus 2 times y plus 4 times z minus 10 equals 0. And the last equation is x plus 3 times y plus 9 times z minus 25 equals 0. The next input is a list of all the variables. In this case, x, y, and z. We can set this equal to SOL. Let's display the solution. Now here we see the solution. In order to access the solution, we must first convert it to a list. To do so, surround the SOL variable with list. Now we have a list. To get the first set of solutions, use the square brackets to index. Now here we have one set of possible solutions where x is 10, y is negative 10, and z is 5. In order to get the value for x, we can index again at 0. Note that the order of the solution is the same as the order of the variables. In order to solve a system of nonlinear equations, we will use the nonlinSolve function. For example, let's solve this equation. First, let's declare the variable x equal to simpy symbols. Then our solution will be equal to simpy.nonlinsolve, followed by a list of the equations. Here we only have one equation, which is negative x squared minus x plus 1. Then a list of all the variables. Here we only have one variable, which is x. Now let's display our solution. Here you can see we have two possible solutions for x. To get the first solution, let's first convert the solution to a list. Now the first value of x is at index 0, and the second possible value for x is at index 1. We will use dsolve to solve differential equations in SimPy. Before we start, we must first update SimPy in order to use initial conditions in dsolve. To upgrade SimPy, start with an exclamation mark, then pip install SimPy dash dash upgrade. Once SimPy has finished installing, press the restart runtime and then yes. Before we start, we must first import SimPy since we restarted the runtime. Now, in order to solve this differential equation, we must first declare x equal to SimPy.Symbols with the symbol x. We must also declare y as a function. To do this, we use SimPy.Function with the capital F and then the symbol, in this case, y. Next, we will set our solution variable equal to SimPy.Dsolve and then the equation. In this case, the left-hand side is y prime. To express y, we use y, round brackets, and then x. Now, to take the first derivative of y, use dot diff, and then x, minus the right-hand side, which is x, times the function y. Notice here that functions must always have an input. Now display the solution. As you can see, we have the solution with a constant c1. In order to remove the constants, we must use the initial condition. To do so, we use ICS for initial conditions, then curly brackets, followed by the initial conditions. 
In this case, our initial condition is at y1, the value is 1. So now we have our equation. To get the left hand side of the equation, we can use dot LHS. And to get the right hand side, we can use RHS. Unlike previous solvers we have discussed, nSolve will return a numerical solution as opposed to a symbolic equation. To use nSolve, we must also provide initial guesses. So let's go ahead and solve this equation. First, we must declare x1, x2 equal to simpi symbols x1 and x2 respectively. Then we will set solution equal to simpy.nsolve followed by the list of equations. So here we have two equations, x1 squared plus x1 times x2 minus 10 equals 0. And the second equation is x2 plus 3 times x1 times x2 squared minus 57 equals 0. Then a list of all the variables, in this case x1 and x2, followed by a list of all initial guess. So our initial guess for x1 is 1.5, and our initial guess for x2 is 3.5. Then we will display our solution. Now you will see the numerical solution for x1 and x2. In this case, x1 is 2 and x2 is 3. Thank <laughs> you.